Brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for joining me on Healing Streams Reflections. The title for today's post is Submitting Your Ways to God in the Land of Affliction. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 41, verse 50 to 52, Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by Asenath, daughter of Potiphar, priest of Og. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all my trouble in all my father's house. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Friends, Many were some of us whose aborted plans and dreams seem to cause much stagnation in our lives today. To most of us, we design zealous dreams and visions, seizing with what we presume America or Europe or Asia to be when we first got our traveling visa or permanent residency visa in our home country. But on arrival, on the foreign soil of America, Europe, Asia, etc. The difficulties, afflictions, and adversities some seems to go through is enough to sweep under the carpet of failure and disgrace as soon as the toiling spirits start having effect on us. But not so with Joseph. Instead, Joseph submitted his ways to God of Israel and was fruitful in the land of affliction. Because of that, Joseph, at his prime age of 30, assumed the new office of prime minister with a commitment to the goals set or prescribed in his dream in verses 47 to 49 of Genesis chapter 41. Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams were all fulfilled. Genesis 41, 47, 53 to 54. Though Joseph was now prosperous and powerful he did not forget his background and god and all that he had gone through at age 17 he had been sold into slavery by his brothers and had spent 13 years as an egyptian slave and in prison therefore joseph was 30 years old when he became second in command in egypt be reminded that the lesson clue from the way Joseph named his two sons portrays that your past life experiences will be a spiritual GPS or compass to guide you into your future dreams and aspirations, especially those of us who will want to blame every setbacks in life to the demons in our father's house or any other demonic activities in our standard family. The Holy Spirit can help you if you will get, or if you will forget all your troubles and pursue a purposeful life of God to make you fruitful in the land of your affliction or suffering. However, my counsel or advice to you is that refuse to be poor in a country or nation such as America or a continent such as Europe or Asia by setting goals that will produce a foundation to build on, providing you a clear direction of life, painting a picture of where you are now and where you are heading towards in your destiny. And above all, your goals will produce persistency, determination, and the needed motivation to reach your destination. During the seven years of abundance, Joseph was diligent in storing the grains effectively as he ensured that the storehouses were full and that all produce was weighed and there was no allegation of any secret storage or secret sales for personal gain. He was transparent and faithful to his task. He was in a contest of abundance but there were there was no indication that 
he was corrupted by it. Joseph's elevation to power as the vice president or prime minister. Joseph carries out economic reforms needed to bring prosperity to the nation. On the other hand, God works in and through Pharaoh, including the dreams, and Pharaoh organized that Joseph, wisdom and discernment were gifts from God needed to solve this national and worldwide crisis. God in turn prospered and made Joseph fruitful. Under the able leadership of Joseph, Egypt had a sustainable abundance for the famine and became the sole distributor of grains to other nations. Through it all, Joseph did not forget his background, though he was not prosperous and powerful in a foreign country or land. It is not surprising Joseph named his two sons to reflect his destiny and the fact that God has not forgotten him. There will be times when it looks like God has forgotten us. This happens to every Christian. Maybe you are being mistreated or living in lack or have an illness which is causing you so much pain and suffering. Joseph went through the same. He was hated by his own brothers, almost murdered by them, and later sold into slavery at the age of 17. He was falsely accused by rape and thrown into prison. To Joseph, life seemed stressful. He had a lot of headache, heartache, and headache. The way he named his two sons is enough to define his life. God sees our pains, beloved and the struggles we go through. But Romans chapter 8, 28 assures you and I that he is able to take all our sufferings and turn it around for our good. Joseph, through his suffering, was being trained to be the good leader that he was now. So, we should be patient in affliction and ask God for strength and deliverance and for his will to be done. Seasons of affliction, chastening, seasons of disappointment, suffering, as well as isolation, persecution, and injustice are seasons of preparation for your God-given assignment, for it helps you to learn the word of God as it begins to yield harvest of right living and be filled with joy as it is able to teach you patience in life as you become qualified. Currently, your Heavenly Father knows what He's doing with your life. Some seasons in your life, you may not understand God's workings. However, embrace the present season God has scheduled in your life. Extract every possible benefit. You survive the fires of the furnace. Seasons perfect you for your assignment. For the psalmist in Psalm 138 verse 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Success is inevitable for the prepared. Remember, your assignment will require seasons of preparation. The fact that all nations came to Egypt to buy grains from Joseph shows the serious responsibility he had and points to his role in God's purpose. How faithful are we in the letter go and trust in our hands?
the affliction of the saints when they are faithful to God and submit their ways to God brings promotion and fruitless fruitfulness never forget how Joseph named these two sons the meaning of Manasseh and Ephraim in Genesis chapter 41 verses 50 to 52 being fruitful in the land of affliction verse 32 makes your dream fulfill help us Lord to be faithful in little or big responsibilities and help us maintain a good heart towards you our God and the people around us even in times of challenges indeed you are the king of kings indeed you are the lord of lords indeed you are the alpha and omega you are sovereign God what you purpose in your heart for your children shall come to pass. Lord, we magnify you. We adore you. We declare your majesty over the economy of this nation. We declare your majesty over the spiritual estate of this nation. And Lord, above all, we declare and decree that with you all things are possible. Father, we praise you that you are looking over your word to perform it. We receive your honor again. Receive your glory for the performance that you are performing at this time. May your name be exalted. May your name be worshipped. May your name be magnified. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods? There is none. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, if you're able to change the economy of a nation like Samaria for just 24 hours, then Lord, with you, holds the mysteries of the nation's economy, holds the mysteries of the nation's spiritual estate, holds the mystery of the social paradigm of any nation in this world. But the Bible declares that, behold, the nations are like a drop of water in the bucket. And so, Lord, we give you the glory and honor that you are in control. We worship you. We magnify your name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for listening. And may God richly bless you. Bye. For now.